At the outer edge of the solar system, beyond the warmth of the sun, where cosmic silence deepens and space begins to forget that life ever existed, there drifts a world we thought we knew. Neptune. For decades, it was the forgotten sentinel. A cold, distant gas giant cloaked in sapphire clouds and methane mists. It stood as a monument to what lay beyond our reach, exotic, beautiful, but ultimately quiet. A place we observed, not one that challenged us. Until now. Because the James Webb Space Telescope, humanity's most advanced eye into the cosmos, has turned its golden gaze toward Neptune. And what it has found isn't just data. It's a rupture. A break in our understanding of what a planet is, what matter can do, and what secrets might still be written into the very orbits of our solar system. This was not an image. It was a warning. Webb's instruments detected anomalies not just in Neptune's temperature or its atmosphere, but in the very laws we use to explain planetary motion. For the first time in recorded history, Neptune's orbit, once charted with Newtonian perfection, is showing deviations that our physics cannot account for. Something is pulling Neptune off course. Something invisible, something real. Initially, the scientific community dismissed it. Glitches, calibration errors, gravitational echoes. But those excuses didn't last long. Because as more instruments locked on, from interferometers on Earth to spectrometers in orbit, a pattern began to emerge. Neptune is being influenced by something that should not exist. It's not just gravity. It's not just mass. It's something deeper, perhaps a force, perhaps a field, twisting around the gas giant like a ghost tether. And then came the real shock. Webb's deep scans of Neptune's internal structure revealed thermal anomalies that should be impossible. Neptune, a world nearly three billion miles from the sun, should be cold, utterly, profoundly cold. And yet, it isn't. Deep beneath its swirling clouds, Webb detected pockets of heat. Persistent. Stable. Growing. No tidal forces explain it. No radioactive decay. No external input. Something inside Neptune is generating energy. And not just heat. Something else. Something stranger. The magnetic field of Neptune has long baffled scientists, tilted, misaligned, chaotic. But Webb revealed that it isn't just misaligned, it's alive. The magnetic field pulses. It shifts. It breaks apart and reforms in patterns that resemble not geology, but biology. It breathes. It pulses in rhythmic cycles. And in one particularly shocking observation, it appeared to respond to solar activity before the activity even occurred, fluctuating days in advance of incoming solar wind, as if Neptune knew it was coming. And then came the signal. Buried deep within the radio spectrum, a low-frequency pulse. Not background noise. Not solar interference. A structured, repeating emission. It rose. It oscillated. Then it vanished. Three independent observatories confirmed it. It was never supposed to be there. Was it a natural resonance echoing through Neptune's turbulent heart? Or was it something else? Something synthetic? Something sent? Some now speculate that Neptune may not just be a planet, it may be a vessel. Or worse, a transmitter. A structure designed to resonate, to amplify, perhaps even to listen. And maybe, to respond. As Webb continued scanning, something else appeared. A shadow. Not a moon. Not a ring fragment. Something far more bizarre. In the cold architecture of Neptune's ring system, something moved, but didn't orbit. It held position. It remained still. Too symmetrical. Too smooth. It wasn't seen in optical range. Only in infrared. And after a week, it was gone. Vanished without a trace. Had it been observing? Waiting? Or was it part of Neptune itself? some long-dormant node that activated under unknown conditions. The silence that followed was deafening. But the most disturbing revelation was yet to come. 
Webb's gravitational lensing data, used to map distortions in spacetime caused by mass, showed a ripple, a subtle bending of light not from the planet itself, but from a point above its equator. A pocket of distorted space. Like a miniature black hole, without the mass. A localized gravitational anomaly behaving like a warp in the very fabric of spacetime. We don't have a name for what that is. We don't have the equations. All we know is that it should not be. And still, there it is. Now, scientists are re-examining everything. The timing. The moon. Neptune's great dark spot, once dismissed as a mere storm, a swirling hurricane of methane and frozen chaos, has begun to defy that definition. Because storms don't adapt. They don't learn. They don't coordinate. But this, does. It doesn't just move. It behaves. It shifts its structure in response to solar wind hours before the particles even arrive. It pulses in harmonic intervals. Its outer layers oscillate with the planet's magnetic field as though synchronizing with a larger, unseen rhythm. At first, scientists believed it was coincidence. Natural resonance. But now, as more data flows in from Webb and other instruments, the conclusion grows unavoidable, Neptune's most iconic storm is not a storm at all. It is a function, a system. It responds like a sensor, processes energy like a converter, and breathes like a lung. It behaves more like an organ than an atmospheric event. And if that's true, then Neptune isn't just a planet. It's a construct. Not alive in the way we define life, but assembled, operating with a purpose. A machine made of gas, gravity, and magnetism. Operating according to instructions no human mind ever wrote. And then came the pattern. When Webb's thermal imaging was cross-referenced with data on Neptune's magnetic fields and the orbital dynamics of its ring system, something impossible emerged. A geometric structure woven into the chaos. A symmetry that shouldn't exist in a natural environment. Quasi-toroidal symmetry. The same mathematical framework found in fusion reactors in containment fields, in theoretical warp propulsion systems, not random, intentional. The energy flows across Neptune's atmosphere follow precise arcs. Its magnetic anomalies rotate with clockwork timing. Its rings vibrate subtly in response to deep internal pulses. No planetary model explains this. But engineering might. Neptune began to look less like a natural object and more like a layered device. A planetary scale machine whose function remains unknown. Which leads to the most disturbing question of all. Was Neptune built? Or worse, was it found, then modified? Because if some intelligence did alter Neptune, sculpted it, shaped its inner layers, rewired its field dynamics, then who, or what, did it? And when? And more urgently, why? We once believed Neptune marked the boundary of our solar system. The last great planet, drifting in the cold beyond. But what if we were wrong? What if it's not the end? What if it's the beginning? Not a destination, but a key, a lock, a relay. Or worse, a warning beacon. A silent sentinel watching from the edge, waiting for someone to understand its signals. To read the message it has hidden in its storms, in its shape, in its strange magnetic pulse. A message written not in words, but in hydrogen, in plasma, in gravity itself. And what if the only reason we can see it now is because we've finally reached the level of technology necessary to understand it? What if this was all timed, engineered, to remain invisible until we became capable enough to interpret its patterns? Then it wasn't just James Webb that found Neptune's secret. It was Neptune that revealed itself. It waited. Watched. And now it answers. Not with sound. Not with light. But with structure. With motion. With unnatural stillness in a place where nothing should be still. And perhaps, with presence. Because as Webb scanned Neptune's shadowed side, buried in the void between orbit and darkness, it saw something else. A shape. A pattern, not a moon. Not a ring fragment. Something symmetrical and still. 
And then it vanished. Not moved. Disappeared. A mechanism retracting into silence? A sensor deactivating? Or something watching and then realizing it had been seen? Whatever it was, it was never part of the Neptune we were taught in classrooms. And then came the final revelation. As gravitational lensing data was mapped around Neptune, scientists noticed a distortion, a ripple in space-time not aligned with Neptune's mass. It wasn't from the planet itself, but from a location above its equator. A zone twisting light in ways consistent with micro-lensing. Like the gravity around a compact singularity. Something is there. Something small, dense, hidden. Something bending space-time like a machine. And now, everything has changed. Because if Neptune houses such a structure, if it is not a passive body but an active device, then our understanding of the solar system collapses. The outer planets may not be natural at all. They may be arranged, aligned, calibrated. A vast, ancient architecture. A cosmic machine built to regulate or to signal. And if Neptune is only one component, what else have we misunderstood? Saturn's rings? Uranus's axial tilt? The strange orbits of Kuiper belt objects? What if the solar system isn't random? What if it's a map? A sequence? An engine? And what if now, only now, we've activated something by observing too closely? What if by seeing Neptune's truth, we've triggered a mechanism that had waited billions of years for witness? Maybe that dark spot wasn't just a storm. Maybe it was a countdown. And the moment Webb locked eyes with it, it started again.